Sometimes you just have to do it. Sometimes you have to find an idiot and kick him, hoping that they'll finally get some brain cells working together, even though we all know that rarely ever happens. And that's what we're going to do here today. If you want to see full-on stupid from the religious, here it comes. Hope you're ready. Now, I want to get this out of the way right up front. This is going to be a very long video of me proving that this Logan Joy guy is a complete idiot. If that's what you want to see, great, stick around. If not, this probably isn't the video for you. I'm doing this not just because it's fun, although there is that, but because this is a fine example of how terrible the thinking of most theists is. If you wanted to see just how dumb these people really are, here you go, all in one bite-sized chunk for your perusal. So, if you're still on board, let's get to it, because this is going to be absolutely pathetic. I would like to break down very quickly why I believe atheism is stupid and why you shouldn't believe it. Well, there's your problem right there. There is nothing at all to believe in with atheism. Atheism isn't a belief. It's a rejection of the nonsensical beliefs of the religious because there is no evidence of any kind to support it. So, if this is how badly he fails in the first five seconds of his video, how bad can the rest of this turn out to be? Well, let's find out. In public schools, we're taught that this Big Bang, this chaotic nothingness, created everything and created order, and nothingness doesn't create order, it creates chaos. Nothingness doesn't create anything. I mean, seriously, how stupid can this imbecile be? Yeah, I know, that's a dumb question. Sorry. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, why are you punching down on this moron? Well, because no theist is really any better. And we've done a lot around here. We've taken on William Lane Craig, Frank Turek, yada yada yada, the list goes on and on and on. Scholars and philosophers, all of these people, they're all really saying the same thing this dumb shit is. They might be a little bit more erudite, they might be using bigger words, but uh, they're not really saying anything more intelligent. So, this is just an indication of what theism actually is. So, as we've done before, let's look at his ratings. As we should expect, at the moment, they're pretty bad. He's at 8 up votes and 82 down votes. This is just a moron in a car, and he's not even in the driver's seat, because frankly, I figure nobody would trust him with a motor vehicle. So, let's continue watching him make a complete fool of himself, because this is the core of religion. It's about all that we can count on. Everything that has a design has a designer. Everything that was made has a maker. It is impossible for something to make itself out of nothing. There is no such thing as nothing. Nothing doesn't exist. Nothing, at least as far as I know, can't exist. That's the problem. These people are just projecting their own stupidity at the camera. It's what happens when you spend all of your time listening to dumb people. You end up like this. So, let's step back for a moment and think about this. There is no evidence of design. That's something you've just cooked up in your own head. You can't show that it ever happened. They're just desperate to get to the emotionally comforting idea that their imaginary friend is real. Stop being stupid, it's not a good look. This is what we really need to evaluate when we look at these videos. They make claims, we have to say, well, is that claim actually true? Is that claim defensible? Can you get there with any kind of rational, evidence-based approach? And the answer is always, nope, you can't. This is all just Fifi's and Faith talking. And Fifi's and Faith is nothing that anyone ought to be proud of. The second that Fifi's and Faith come out, you know you're talking to an idiot. So, I don't know, back to the video. 
it takes way more faith to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian and to be any other religion for that matter. The Bible says even a fool believes in God. Which explains you people. The rest of us are just laughing our asses off at you. Now, at this point, I figure we could just stop because it's pretty clear he's not going to have a single intelligent thing to say. However, we are going to use this as a teaching opportunity for all of the religious people out there who, I hope, are going to take one look at this doofus and realize just how bad he's making them look. This is nothing that anyone ought to be proud of. For the religious, look at this guy. This is what you look like. You might not be this bad, you might not be this ignorant, but for rational people, this is you. It's just sad. And I believe that's the truth. Because in the heart of every atheist is a hatred for God, not unbelief. It's suppression of the truth. Hey, if uh, that's what it takes for you to get through the day. Yeah, you're an imbecile. This is truly embarrassing. What next? All atheists really believe they just want to sin. See, this is what you look like if you've never actually spoken to anyone outside of your pathetic religious echo chamber in your life. This is not the real world. Grow the hell up. If you look at everything around us, even the beauty of childbirth, the beauty of conception, if you look at an ultrasound and you're telling me there's no God, I don't know what to tell you. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. My book says a thing that I like, so it's all got to be true. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, Logan. You need some serious psychological help. And yeah, let's look at childbirth since you brought it up. If you've ever seen it, it's a horror show. And I'm sure he's never seen it up front. I'm sure he's never gotten laid. But since I've been there twice personally, um, yeah, it's a mess. You try shoving a watermelon through any orifice you have available and see how much you like it. Lots of blood, often tearing, stuff that was never designed. It's just how it happens to work, and it actually results in death a lot. Every single day, maternal mortality kills about 800 women worldwide. In 2020, a woman died every two minutes in childbirth. And that's after a massive drop-off between 2000 and 2020, where it dropped by 34%. Logan, you're a moron. You really are. That is how the earth was formed. You can take God out of the schools. You can say that a lie is the truth and you can teach it to children. And then you can wonder why there's no protection in schools and why God has removed himself from schools. Your God is kind of pathetic if that's the case. Of course, there's no reason to think that your imaginary friend is real. So you just look like a laughing stock, which... Of course you are. It's why the more secular a country is, the more healthy it tends to be. I mean, we can look at the 2021 Social Progress Index rankings and see what's what. We'll limit this to the top 10 countries just to make it easy, and this video is going to be long enough as it is. It takes into account everything from basic human needs, personal safety, information, personal rights, yada, yada, yada. All the things that make the modern world work. Then we can go look at the top 10 most non-religious societies in the world and see how they match up. Four out of the top 10 are also in the top 10 most atheist countries on the planet. Now, how many of those remaining are highly religious? None. None of them at all. Not a damn one of them. So let's see what's left. Iceland, number four on the list, it's majority non-religious at 54%. Canada, it's 63% atheist. Germany, 66% atheist. There's a very distinct pattern turning out here, and it shows a distinct negative correlation between social stability and health and religiosity. It's really not that hard to figure out. You can say, well, if God is so good, why does bad things happen? Well, what is bad to an atheist? Well, I don't know. Rape, murder. I mean, it's not really that hard to come up with a list. Where are these things the least prevalent? 
Yeah, secular countries. Where are they the most prevalent? Well, that tends to be with the religious. And we can look that up, too. Take murder, for example, since, well, why not? The top 10 highest murder rates in the world per 100,000 people is this. So, we can cross-reference back to our religious index and find out that Jamaica, the highest rate of murder in the world, Jamaica is 69% Christian. Okay, how about the Honduras? Well, a 2001 Gallup poll showed that it was 70% Catholic, 23% Protestant, and only 2% non-religious. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. South Africa? 80% are Christian, with another 5% being Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, or some other faith. One more, Mexico. Over 80% of Mexicans are Christian. Now, we can just keep going, but I don't think we need to. Not one of the countries on that list are majority secular. It doesn't really look good for your side, does it? And what is the measure of bad to an atheist? What is good? If you are to define good, who can trust your definition? I don't really care. You didn't ask about trust. You asked for a list, and I gave you one. You're just being dumb. Knock it off. But here, he's just looking for a magical authority. And there aren't any. He thinks his imaginary friend comes up with this stuff, but that's what happens when you're stupid. It's humans who define what's good and what's bad, and the penalties for crossing the line. It is not your imaginary spook in the sky. Stop being dumb. Because you came from nothing. You are an accident, a chaotic accident, and you came from nothing. Therefore, your opinion means nothing. Therefore, nothing means anything. Therefore, you're just dumb. This is what happens when you just run off at the mouth without having a script or any idea what the hell you're going to be talking about. This is what ignorant looks like, and it's not a good look, sorry. It's also what projection looks like, because if you notice, he's just pushing his own religious belief on everybody else and pretending that we're all just like he is. Except, we're not. Thank goodness. There is nothing sadder than the belief that when we die, nothing happens. There is no punishment for the bad, and there is no reward for the good. And that's just an emotional reaction. Notice he's saying that it's sad. He doesn't actually care if it's true. He's just looking to have his fifis coddled like a spoiled two-year-old. And that's ultimately what these people are. They are pathetic children, desperately looking for a magical father figure in the sky to watch over them and tell them what to do so they don't have to come to any conclusions on their own. Because thinking is hard. Obviously, these people just aren't capable. That is a bunch of nonsense. If you believe that, that's insanity. And you're just looking in the mirror. You are out of your ever-loving mind. You really are. You've got some serious problems upstairs, and sadly, you are not alone. Religion, at least serious religion, they all look like this guy. You've got the con man apologists on one side, the clergy with their hands out for your money on the other side, and then these nutballs in the middle sucking their dicks. They just want to believe. And if you just want to believe something because you're not emotionally mature enough to know any better, yeah, you need to seek some professional help. And I'm not saying this because I hate atheists. I'm saying this because your belief doesn't make any sense. And Christians have always been on the defensive. I'm taking it to the offensive. Well, uh, you are offensive. I'll give you that. I mean, it's not like I care. We're all just laughing at you. The entire internet is laughing at you. But you don't even know how badly that you've been trounced. So I went just for shits and giggles and looked at this guy's channel. With as many people out there making fun of him, I'd have half expected him to just give up and stop making videos, but I guess, to his credit, he has persisted. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, and expecting different results, right? So, in his videos, I learned that he got converted to fundagelicalist stupidity when he was 26, and that makes him... Uh, I figure, in the midst of his new Christian syndrome. And that's where someone is so on fire for the Lord that their mental faculties have completely burned away to ash. 
They don't have any concept of actual reality, nor do they care. And after seeing as much as we've seen so far, that kind of explains a lot, doesn't it? There are many atheists that have testimonies right now because they've been to hell and God showed them mercy and now they're back. Nope, not a one. You have people making claims, but nothing that anyone can prove actually happened with evidence. Plus, as we all know, there are a lot of theists out there who love to just make up stories about how they used to be atheists, but funny, they can never ever back that up, can they? They can never show how intelligent rational, evidence-based atheism evaporated because they found actual proof that any god of any kind was actually real. Every single case is, oh, but my fee-fees. That's not to say that it can't happen. I've never seen it, but I'm saying it could happen, I suppose. But in reality, it never happens for good demonstrable reasons. And it's funny how that works, huh? You don't have to believe me, but that doesn't make it untrue. That is not how that works. Truth has nothing at all to do with what you believe. It has to do with what's verifiable in the real world. I don't care if you say that you believe in aliens. That doesn't mean that aliens are real. I don't care if you believe in Bigfoot. That doesn't mean the Bigfoot is out there. The only way to get to aliens being real or Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or gods or whatever is to produce verifiable, demonstrable evidence that any of them actually exist. Go ahead and do that. We've been waiting for that forever. But I really want to believe. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. Stop being a dumbass. This world has perfect structure and order. For it is appointed every man to die once, and after this, the judgment. After your death, that's it. So you can try to contradict the word of God. I also want to say this. This is just short attention span theater, if you notice. He's just all over the place. Whatever comes into his tiny little mind, he's just letting it dribble out there because he's got some problems. Now, I'm not trying to insult him because he's an idiot, although clearly he is, but because I think he and people like him seriously need professional help. These people have some severe emotional problems. They have something wrong with their cognitive faculties. Rational people don't act like this. Rational people don't need to. Get some help. You obviously need it. To those people that don't understand the Word of God, it's because God hasn't given you the understanding. The Bible says that Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scripture. The Holy Spirit will make it obvious to you. He's a spirit of truth. Well, whose fault is that? If you think that God is just going to magically open my mind and prove it to me, then when the hell is he going to get around to that? Right now, I am not convinced. In fact, at this moment, you're just convincing me that you're an imbecile. You are doing far more harm to your own cause than good. This guy is a complete wackaloon. He really needs the guys with the white coats to come along and take him to a padded room. Does anybody disagree? Let me know in the comments. But atheists don't want truth, they want lies. Which, demonstrably, we don't. We want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We don't want your empty claims or your silly book of mythology or all of the emotionally comforting drivel that you're just ripping out of your asshole. We don't care what you believe. We don't care what you have faith in. We care what you can prove using verifiable evidence. Let us know when you've got any of that, because no theist in the history of forever has ever gotten remotely close. And that's kind of a problem, wouldn't you say? Atheists want to believe that somehow everything that we see today came from some random explosion and that we evolved from monkeys. The ignorance gets mighty tiring, doesn't it? Because none of that is actually true. But, of course, he's not remotely concerned with that, is he? 
He just wants comfort, no matter how absurd it is. So, I'm not going to bother to correct him per se. Others have already done that in the comments on his video. You can go and look at that if you want. But, of course, he hasn't responded to any of them because he doesn't care if what he says is true. There has been one and only one comment on his video that was positive, and it also, conveniently, is the only comment that he responded to. All of the people pointing out just how wrong he is, well, those people he just ignored. Why am I not surprised? Like Steve Harvey said, why do we still got monkeys? Because he's an idiot and so are you. I mean, this was 2015 or something, but here you go, for anyone who hasn't seen it, just to prove what imbeciles they put on the mainstream news, because you don't get much dumber than this. But if you don't believe in God, I mean, really, you got to have an explanation for this. You just can't tell me this spun out of a gastrous ball. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, then we were evolved from monkeys. Why we still got monkeys? If we evolved from monkeys, why do we still have monkeys? And if you want to tell me this world is billions of billions of years old, and that I'm an idiot for believing that it's thousands of years old, why on earth did it take so long to invent a toilet, a toaster, a car? All these little, these things, I mean, there's no way. We are in year 2023 right now, currently. 2,000 years ago, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died on a cross for every single atheist that hates him. Okay, you're an idiot. This is really embarrassing for anyone who believes this stuff. Looking at this stuff should hurt. It should make you feel really awful in the pit of your stomach. Guess what? This is what you look like to people on the outside. Now, this is an extreme case to be sure, but if it makes you cringe, and it should, then be aware that everything that you say when you're talking about your imaginary friend, that sounds every bit as dumb. So, by all means, keep believing this crap if you really want to, because it just gives the rest of us something to laugh at. You are not going to convert anybody with a brain, because the people on your side, they don't tend to have one. He died for those who hate him. Jesus Christ is undeniable. Every Muslim believes Jesus Christ existed, and Muslims believe he was a prophet. Yeah, but Muslims are idiots too, and for the same reason. So are Hindus and Scientologists and all the rest. You are not helping your case here. Well, I'm not crazy. There's other people who believe the same crazy shit too. Yeah, but they're crazy. You are not in good company. These people should be no more respected than you are. You've got problems. So do they. It's obvious. Seek professional help. You all absolutely need it. You need to figure out how to come to grips with the real world. Because right now, you're nowhere remotely close. Jewish people believe he existed. Atheists have to believe he existed because historically he existed. No, he didn't. Now, I'm not saying that I know for certain that there wasn't some historical Jesus analog of some kind, but what we see in the Bible, the magic man-god who did miracles and rose from the dead, that is all complete nonsense. If you believe it, go ahead and trot out your evidence and keep your faith in your fifis to yourself because they do not remotely count. This is where the religious consistently go wrong. Right now, as I'm writing this, there is another debate going on over in my channel where somebody, I've got no idea if they're religious or not, they're just asserting that historical things are real just because people believe in them. No, that's not actually how that works. We should accept that things are real when, and only when, we can demonstrate that they are, in fact, real, and not one second before. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and unfortunately, these people don't even have ordinary evidence to back them up. That's never going to go away, no matter how often you childishly stomp your feet and hold your breath. So, where is this external evidence for Jesus? Go ahead and produce some. And I predict utter failure because that's what always happens. How about you? Let me know if you think this guy would ever succeed. What does BC stand for? What does AD stand for? <sighs> he really doesn't know, does he? Those are things 
the people just made up. Jeez, you can't conceivably be that dumb, can you? Does he honestly think that, say, 4,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians thought that they were living 2,000 years BC? I mean, really? Is he that dumb? Let me know what you think in the comments, because this is really getting pretty hard to believe. This is why it's so difficult to tell the difference between an actual believer and a Poe. They all look this dumb, don't they? Why do we recognize them with two major holidays? Alright, do you want to tell them or should I? Christmas and Easter were both pagan holidays co-opted by the Christians. They originally had nothing at all to do with Jesus, and in most places these days, they don't anyway. They are almost entirely secular holidays, and I can almost feel my brains dribbling out of my ears listening to this dipshit. It gets kind of sad. Even though it's complete pagan holidays that we celebrate gift giving and buying products and consumerism, atheism is the biggest lie. Ugh, I almost choked on my gum. <laughs> oh, oh. You're going to make me hyperventilate over here because I'm just laughing at you. This is what terminal ignorance looks like. And this is what's going on in the heads of a lot of committed Christians. Maybe they should be committed because <laughs> these people are nuts. Maybe we'll just keep that part in. Sure, why not? You've already spent four minutes making a complete fool of yourself. You might as well go for the full trifecta. Atheism is the biggest lie. It's the biggest win for the devil. Because there are actually people that believe in nothing. And they believe that by believing in nothing, it counteracts the truth and what's really going to happen when you die. And what is that, and how do you know it? Oh, I know. It says so in the Bible. Well, fuck the Bible. Faith doesn't mean anything. Faith, the kind of blind faith you're exercising, that's a mental aberration. Faith is believing in what you ought to know ain't so. It's just that these people are so stupid, so ignorant, so utterly clueless that they couldn't think their way out of a wet paper bag if they tried. I know that's a mixed metaphor, but um, yeah, whatever. It still works. These are people that clearly never learned anything in their legally mandated education. It's why the religious are so terrified of anyone going to a non-religious school. They might be exposed to some actual facts and not the religious bullcrap that keeps them within the fold. When you die, you will not have a say on where you go. Neither will you, since you're going to be dead. You get to decompose, and that's about it. What you wish would happen, that doesn't actually mean anything. Only what actually happens does, and, uh... Sorry, you don't just get whisked off to a magical happy land where you can kiss your imaginary friend's ass forever and ever. Who in their right mind would want to do that? Oh right, these people aren't in their right mind, are they? No surprise. If you die outside of Christ's love and forgiveness, you will be carried and taken away to hell. Says who? Because if you ask a Muslim, since you brought that up, you go to Jahannam. If you're not a Muslim, you fry. According to Hinduism, you go to Naraka. Granted, you can come back after you paid for your sins, which makes it arguably better than the crap Christianity and Islam and religions like that come up with, but all of it is entirely unsupported. Faith doesn't get you anywhere. So why is this idiot's ideas about hell better than the Muslims or the Hindus or any number of other religious beliefs? Because he doesn't actually give a crap. It's true because he wants it to be true. What an idiot. And don't say that somebody didn't warn you. Because I'm telling you right now. Make your jokes. Call me stupid. I am telling you the truth. This world was perfectly made by a designer. The Father created everything. And Jesus Christ, his son, died for you. Really? Prove it. Now, I know that's a pointless request. It is, no matter what theist you ask, because they have no actual answers. They just have fifis. They aren't concerned about the truth at all. They just want to believe. Whether any of it is true, that's irrelevant, because these people, they just aren't very bright. I mean, look at him. I'm surprised he's not drooling. This is the problem with religion. It always has been, and it always will be. 
This is the kind of person that it appeals to. Don't be this guy. And if you get on your knees and you humble yourself right now and ask for forgiveness, I believe he will forgive you. God wants all to come to repentance, even those who mock him. But make no mistake, he is a just God. So if you die not believing, it won't change the fact that he's real. I mean, citation needed? I think it would be hysterical to take some of the most fanatical, clueless theists from across the religious spectrum, put them all in a room together, and just lock the door. I mean, obviously, nobody's going to come out alive, because these people tend to be violent and unreasonable, but I guess it would be fun to watch. Put it on pay-per-view. You'd make a billion dollars. In Jesus' name, I pray, I pray honestly that you come to him. Because in school, in public school, I was taught a bunch of lies, and I had to answer questions on how the earth was created, and they told me how it was created, and it wasn't created in their eyes. It was an explosion of nothingness that created chaos. Uh, it's just the, mo it's the most depressing thing ever to think that. And there you go. This isn't about reality. It's about feelings. Well, I don't like it, so it can't be true. But that is not how the real world works, sorry. This is just dumb people being dumb, making fools of themselves, and proving to the world just how insane they actually are. This thing ought to be mandatory viewing in schools. This is why you get an education. Don't do religion. Just say no. Otherwise, you turn into this. It doesn't make any sense. Why are we here? You could rob a bank. If you could get away with a crime, why not do it? There's no morality in atheism. There's no morality without a law. There's no morality without God because God is morality. I pray that every atheist changes their mind watching this video. That is not how any of that works. In fact, there is no morality in religion. Oh, God will punish you after you're dead. Really? Says who and how do you prove it? That's the big question. Of course, they can't and they don't care. Instead, people just get away with murder and rape and all of the terrible crimes because, well, you just can't get in the way of God's justice, can you? Leave it all to God. And then nothing demonstrably happens. By the grace of God, he will forgive you. In Jesus' name. Yeah, right. So anyway, that's where this video ends. But we're not going to stop there. So many people made fun of this lunatic that he decided to double down and put out another video responding to it all. Well, not really responding to it. Instead, he's making excuses for why he's such a ludicrous wingnut. And I thought it would be kind of fun to look at that too while we're here since this is already a long enough video. It's not that long and so long as we're, well really, really running long today. Why not? So, here we go again. 1 Peter 4.12-17 through Yeah, okay, we are not going to listen to you reading out of your big book of multiple choice. We're going to fast forward past that, try to save a little bit of time. I guess at least he got out of the car. Maybe this is a group home, I don't know. I'm assuming not in a good place. <sighs> Suffering for Christ's sake is an honor. It's a privilege, and I'm grateful for it. I love every single person that's commented on the atheist videos, the apology videos. I've laughed at some of the things, honestly, that's popped up. I'm not going to respond in debate certain things. Of course you're not. You can't. This is really common, isn't it? Well, I'm not going to respond to that. No, because you'll just look stupid. I mean, even stupider than you already do. That's why this second video is called My Final Response to Atheists. He's about to run away. And I just scrolled through the comments on this video and, as expected, he didn't respond to anybody. Either he knows what a complete laughingstock he is, or he knows that he'll just make an even bigger fool of himself this time, and he's just going into damage control mode. It's not exactly a surprise. Certain responses, a lot of 
I'm going to say nasty things, and that's fine. I'm not here to debate. Because you can't. None of them can. The second that you reject their absurdly empty claims, they just say, well, I'm not actually trying to prove any of this. No, because it's not defensible. It's why people like Stands Against Reason does what they do. They know that their message is totally indefensible and that their students are going to constantly lose. Therefore, just come up with an excuse for why they aren't going to get anywhere that both comforts the idiots that you sold your course to and keeps them coming back for more and paying you for the trouble. I bet this guy would shell out for something like that. What about you? I'm here to relay the gospel and you can accept or reject it. And that is what God wants as well. Accept or reject it, but I'm not here to debate. I don't have a shred of doubt in my mind. And I believe that you're commenting, a lot of these people are commenting, because you need to be right. Looking in the mirror again, huh? You make a video, supposedly about atheism, and when a bunch of actual atheists show up and just laugh at your stupidity, you get pissed off, play the reversal card, well, you just have to be right, said with extreme confidence in your own blind faith, and then, yeah, you don't understand what you're doing. I mean, that doesn't sound weird, does it? I don't need to be right. I believe it with all my heart. I know God, he knows me. You need to be right. Because if I'm wrong and you're right, we're going to the same place. How about if we're both wrong? Then you're going to go to whatever hell of the God or gods that actually exist, right? We both will. Or maybe whatever God happens to exist, if one does, they're only punishing the ones who are actively following the wrong God. The rest of us, we can get away scot-free because at least we didn't follow the opposition. Or, as seems to be the option best supported by the evidence, we both just die and that's the end of it. But at least we had a life while we had a chance and you just wasted it on your knees talking to yourself. You ended up looking stupid. I mean, stupider. That's kind of pathetic. I'm not scared. I trust in Jesus Christ. That's where I put my trust. I don't put my trust in nothing. God bless. Yeah, whatever. Because here's the thing. I don't really care what he believes. He's just entertainment at this point, and honestly, he wasn't really all that entertaining. It's like watching crazy people on the street corner babbling incoherently and ramming their heads into the wall. That's exactly how he came off. It's sad, but the guys in the white coats won't come out and take him away for a 24-hour psych eval, will they? They should, but that's unfortunately not how these things go. He's not enough of a danger to himself and others, as he could be, although really, I don't think anyone should really trust this guy farther than they could throw him, because these people tend to snap, grab a gun, and just go shoot up the infidels. These people need to be on a watch list somewhere. Who knows, maybe they already are. But before we go, I wanted to say one last thing to theists especially, who actually made it through this video. This is you. I'm sorry if you can't see yourself in this, but this is you. This is what you look like to people on the outside. This is what you sound like when you talk about your imaginary friend. So I understand why a lot of these people only want to hang out with other people who are just like they are. They want to assume that everybody out there is just like they are. Because otherwise, it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? And it is, or it should be. And you should look at these people and go, God, do I really look like that? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, you do. And that goes whether you're talking about crazies like this guy, or if you're talking about people who just quietly talk about their faith. You all sound like this. You might not be this dangerous, potentially, but you all sound like this, and maybe you should figure that out. Maybe you should care if what you believe is true. And uh, if you do, you're going to be better off for it, and you won't look anything like this anymore. Boom, <laughs>
Dick it, 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 dick it